Hello, welcome to the Unseen World channel. Today we are going to talk about the life of Edward VII, the British playboy king with an insatiable sexual appetite. Edward VII was the eldest son of Queen Victoria and the British king from 1901 to 1910. With only a few actual duties in the government of the British Empire and an enormous amount of influence and money at his disposal. Edward quickly gained the reputation as a playboy prince who loved whores, doing gambling, eating and drinking. Edward's nicknames were Dirty Bertie and Edward the Caresser because of his insatiable sex drive. Edward loved the prostitution of 19th century in Paris, the best city in the 19th century to have the most joyful life was Paris. In 1864, the 23-year-old prince visited Paris and left his mark in the city. Edward wasn't interested in Parisian high art. Instead, he was into the city brothels and famous courtesans. The young prince was one of the first sex tourists. In the best brothel in Paris, Le Chabonnet, Edward rented his own private room for years in advance. He loved to have sex in a luxurious sphinx bathtub, filled with nothing less than champagne. Over the years, Edward gained a lot of weight. In order not to crush his mistresses, he commissioned famous French cabin maker Louis Soubrier in 1890 to make a love chair in French, siège d'amour. The chair was placed in his private room at Le Chibonnet. Supposedly, the love chair enabled Edward to make love with two women at the same time. Edward had sex with the best Parisian courtesans. Hortense Schneider was a French operetta star. She had affairs with the most powerful men of her time, French Emperor Napoleon III, Tsar Alexander II of Russia, King Louis I of Portugal, Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria, and Edward VII. They were amongst her famous clientele. The affair between Hortense and Edward inspired the famous French writer Emile Zola to write his novel title, Nana. Edward spent nights also with the famous English courtesan, Cora Pearl. She was a high-end courtesan who counted Charles Duc de Mony, half-brother of Emperor Napoleon III, and Joseph Charles Paul Bonaparte, cousin of Emperor Napoleon III, among her lovers. Another lady who shared Edward's bed was Italian courtesan Giulia Barucci, who called herself the number one whore in Paris. When she was introduced to Edward, she let her dress fall to the ground and stood completely naked in front of him. When she was criticized, she replied, What? Did you not tell me to behave properly to his royal highness? I showed him the best I have, and it was free. Although Edward got married to Princess Alexandra of Denmark in 1863 and had six children with her, this didn't stop him from having many mistresses. As for Alexandra, she accepted her husband's infidelities and acknowledged his mistresses. They both knew they were married for dynastic purposes. According to most biographers, Edward had at least 50 mistresses. Edward's love affairs resulted in scandals, suicides and divorces and were damaging to the reputation of the British monarchy. Let's have a closer look at some of the most prominent mistresses of Edward VII. Jeannie Churchill, known as Lady Randolph Churchill, was an American heiress and socialite. She is best known as the mother of the famous Winston Churchill. Jeannie was one of the most desired women of her time and a very popular member of British society. 
She had a strictly sexual affair with Edward because Ginny didn't allow herself to fall in love. On one occasion, Edward wrote to Ginny to arrange for a tryst, asking her if she would serve him tea in her loose-fitting geisha dress. The couple even had pet names for each other. Ginny Churchill called Edward Tom Tom in a reference to his obesity, and he called her Ma Chère in French, My Dear. Lily Langtre was one of the first Edward's long-term mistresses. They met at a dinner party in 1877 and began a passionate affair. The relationship ended once Lily became pregnant with a friend and Edward became involved in her dirty divorce case. He distanced from her to save his reputation, but still helped her with her stage career. Daisy Greville was a member of Edward's inner circle. They had a love relationship that lasted 11 years and was a constant source of fun and entertainment for Victorian society. She received the nickname Babbling Brook for talking about her affair with Edward. Alice Keppel was Edward's last mistress. She even visited him while he was dying although Edward didn't recognize her anymore. In exchange for sexual favors, Edward kept Alice financially secure. Among others, he gave her shares of a rubber company worth 50,000 pounds, over $8 million in today's value. I do not mind what she does as long as she comes back to me in the end, said Alice's husband about her affair. Interestingly, Alice's great-granddaughter, Camilla Parker Bowles, became the mistress and the second wife of Prince Charles, now King Charles, who is Edward's great-great-grandson. Thank you for watching.